Hello and welcome to the channel. Today what we're going to talk about is monitoring Azure Logic App Standards health with metrics. Let's go. All right, so let's talk a little bit about why this episode is important. We've recently added support, and this is in public preview, for metrics within your Azure Logic App Standard instance. Now, this is going to be enabled by default, and there's no additional cost for using this. Now, what this feature will allow you to do is to be able to perform some ad hoc exploration around the performance of your workflows. So I think we've all been there where you want to just quickly go ahead and look and see what is the behavior. Maybe you've had one of those kind of bad days where you've had a workflow and maybe other systems that it's talking to haven't quite been in sync. And you want to be able to just quickly drill down and figure out what's going on. And so this feature is great for being able to go ahead and do that. So we're going to give you the ability to go ahead and filter by workflow, the ability to filter by status. We'll also allow you to split by workflow and split by status as well, just so that you can try to isolate like one workflow and its related performance against another. And uh, I'll certainly show you that in the demo. Now, the other thing, and uh, this is a little bit of breaking news, but uh, in the not so distant future, do look for an application insights video. And I will also be showing these metrics showing up there as well. So what's cool is we've got some consistency in terms of the metrics that are being emitted and how you can go ahead and use those as part of your overall application monitoring strategy. So let's go ahead and dive into a demo. All right, so I'm in my Logic app, and what I'm going to do is I do have a, a bunch of workflows in here. These workflows have been running quite regularly. Some are generating errors on purpose, some are executing successfully, and I wanna now sort of show you how I can use this new feature to uh, further investigate the health of my workflows. So what I can do is scroll down on the left nav here, and go over to metrics, which is under the monitoring tab itself. And within this monitoring tab, I can now see this experience here. So I've got a scope, which is my logic app. I've got a namespace. This is the default app service. And now if I go ahead and click on this drop down, drop down I'm gonna see a list of different metrics. Now, what we do have is because we do run on top of you know functions and, and app service um, as a platform, we do see some additional metrics that exist. And these metrics um, would have been there. Like if you would have gone into your Logic App even a couple weeks ago, you would have seen these. But these weren't necessarily Logic App workflow specific. And that's really the goal of what we're trying to achieve here with this latest enhancement. So if we scroll down to the bottom, we're going to see these different metrics that start with workflow. And we've got, what is it? I think one, two, three, four, five, six, seven in total. And you can see what we're trying to achieve here. Like we're, we're gonna go ahead and deal with actions, right? And whether or not actions are completed. We've got some job execution. So if you're looking, trying to find some delays or duration, you'll be able to go ahead and, and identify those. Then we've got workflow runs, uh, completed workflow runs dispatched. Now, the uh, difference between these two is dispatch represents uh, basically requests that may have been queued, but have subsequently run. And so if you think about scenarios where you've got concurrency, you don't kind of lose a message, right? So you still have those basically stored inside of in some internal queues um, ready for processing. And once there's dispatch, then they're actually started to run. Uh, we've also got workflow run started and then workflow triggers completed. Now, one thing you might be asking yourself is, okay, well, why is it like completed? Like, why don't I see something that's failed? And that we're gonna get through, get to through the use of a filter. So you can kind of think of these, if you have workflows or, or basically, uh, you know, triggers where, you know, you've started the, the process, you know, that's where we could see these in action. And then completed would represent a completed execution, whether that's successful or whether it's failed. So what let's focus on now is just on the workflow runs completed. So we'll click on that. And then what we can see is, you know, different aggregations. We can do some, 
count average min max. I'm just going to stick with sum. Now the other thing I can go ahead and do here is take a look at this time dimension, right? So I can go ahead and choose what I'm interested in. I'm going to leave this in the last 24 hours uh, just because that's where predominantly most of my data was generated. So over specific periods, you know, we can see that we've got different workflows that have been running. Now at this point, I don't really know which workflow is which, like how do I know which workflow ran the most? So there's a couple ways I can do that. Let's start by applying splitting. So we can then split based upon workflow name and maybe let's just, we can boost this up to 50 and then we can choose descending or ascending. Uh, maybe let's just go descending. And now we can start to see a little bit of a breakdown. So I can see that my flow that contains errors run 27 times, sample demos ran six, and then we also have the uh, you know the the generic one as well. So now I can start to see you know executions. And so sometimes this is helpful where you get asked the question, well, how many times did this workflow run in the last 24 hours? And like no one wants to be in run history, you know, counting that up manually. Uh, in theory, you could go to Application Insights, write a query, figure that out too. But hey, this is pretty quick uh, for you to be able to go ahead and do it. And maybe this is something that is, you know, a regular thing that you might get asked or, or want to like at least track, go ahead and save that to a dashboard or send that to a workbook. So it is reusable from, from that perspective, which is, which is pretty cool. So that's one way of being able to spl uh, apply splitting. Let's take a look at another way. Uh, let's now select status. And once again, we'll do descending. Let's bump this up to say 50. And now we can start to see that we've got um, failed and we've got successful executions and we can split uh, that and see that sort of broken up by that. So that's, um, that's what splitting is and, and that's, that's pretty cool just to isolate it. Now, another thing you can do, if you know that you've got, actually, let's go back here. Let's go back and say status. And here we can see that, you know, we've got our, our big issue is this uh, logic apps metrics demo, you know, spelt incorrectly. Uh, workflow. We know this is my problem, not this one. So now that we know that we've got these failed ones, let's go ahead and deselect this and let's apply filtering. So now what we can do is say, okay, I want to dig deeper into that particular workflow. And so I can now go ahead and say, here's the workflow name. And we know it's the one that my flow that contains errors. And now we can see, you know, this running. And let's say that we're now only interested in those failed executions because we did have some successful. So let's now go ahead and add status and then select failed. And then we can see exactly when did these failures start to happen, right? And then I have the ability to now, you know, further investigate perhaps that time window. But there's always that scenario of like, okay, when did it start failing? That's usually like, the most important signal that you can get. So then you can try to figure out, well, what was going on around that time? Like was another system down during that time? Was there a maintenance window? Was there some other issue? So this will help in, in that regards. Now, naturally, if we wanted to see like, oh, okay, so that's interesting. Let's now see one more, when did we have some successful runs? And we can see that we did have a few successful runs uh, as well. We had six around this time frame. Well, what happened during that time frame? as well. So this is, uh, you know, another way that you can start to filter down and to start to really zero in on what is the root cause, what's the problem. And I think that's always the goal when you're doing operations is how do I quickly identify root cause or at least zero in on the root cause so then I can like dive deeper and, you know, get my systems back up and running and uh, make sure everybody's happy. So that's the quick demo itself. Uh, go ahead and check it out. Explore what some of these different options are, the different metrics. You know, maybe the actions are interesting as well. If you've got specific actions that uh, are problematic for you and you want to figure out like, like how often does that action fail? And uh, this might be another opportunity to do a sim similar exercise that I showed you at the workflow level, but focusing more in on the action itself. So that concludes uh, today's video, but thanks for checking out, checking it out. If you're not following me on Twitter, you can go ahead and find me at Weirzy. You're obviously on my YouTube channel, subscribes, likes, comments, always appreciated. Thanks again, and we'll see you soon. Take care.